After years of delays and setbacks, on August 12th, United Launch Alliance finally managed to roll its newest rocket onto the launch pad at the Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. Once the undisputed leader of America's space industry, ULA had been steadily losing ground to Elon Musk's SpaceX. To survive, the company had to start from scratch, designing a rocket powered by an all-American engine and built with the efficiency needed to lift some of the nation's most advanced satellites into orbit. This launch could determine whether ULA remained a major player in the rocket race or ceded its place to a growing field of competitors fighting to conduct the Space Force's most critical missions. So when the rocket got into position and the countdown began, all eyes turned to it. It was time for the Vulcan Centaur to prove itself. For the Space Force and its launch partners, speed is everything. New rockets need to be built, tested, and improved fast enough to keep pace with the rest of the globe. The same principle applies in software today, and that's where Lovable comes in. Lovable is an AI-powered platform that lets you build apps and websites simply by describing what you want to the AI. Within just minutes of chatting, it delivers a real working project you can test, refine, and expand. Once you have a prototype running, you can keep building on it by asking the AI to add features or make changes, improving and personalizing your project step by step. Whether you're working solo or as part of a larger team, Lovable adapts so everyone can contribute and move quickly together. With that freedom, you spend less time fighting with setup and more time focusing on creativity and the ideas that truly matter. Even as one of the newest names in tech, Lovable is already used by millions worldwide and has become one of the fastest growing startups in the world. So if you're ready to launch your own project at full speed with your rules, check out Lovable. Go to lovable.dev and use my code DARKTECHYT20 for 20% off. Valid until October 29th, 2025. Not long ago, America's military rocket program was still a young industry. Earlier this year, Chief of Space Operations General Chance Saltzman reminded the assistants at a defense conference, quote, It was only about 10 years ago when we had one provider and just a few rocket systems. That sole provider was United Launch Alliance, or ULA, a joint venture formed in the early 2000s between Boeing and Lockheed Martin. Its mission was to carry commercial payloads, scientific instruments, and some of the nation's most classified defense systems into orbit. For over two decades, ULA relied primarily on two rockets, the Atlas V and the Delta IV. At their peak, these were among the most powerful and technologically advanced launch systems in the world. They delivered America's heaviest military satellites and supported missions that had a direct impact on people all around the world, including Project Kuiper, which used Atlas V to deploy dozens of Amazon's internet satellites into orbit. But ULA's era of dominance is no longer assured, and SpaceX, its primary challenger, is ready to fly past them, with the company winning a contract to conduct 40% of U.S. military launches between 2022 and 27. SpaceX's main system is the Falcon 9. Since its debut in 2010, it's become the most flown American orbital rocket, surpassing 500 launches by 2025, with only a very small margin of failures to report. As a partially reusable launch vehicle, Falcon 9 revolutionized spaceflight economics. Some individual boosters have flown up to 29 missions, driving down costs and making it the go-to option for both government and commercial customers. Still, ULA is not just letting SpaceX take over without a fight, and determined to keep its dominance, the company is preparing to enter a new era of space launches with a brand new all-American rocket. One of the biggest challenges ULA faced when developing its new rocket was finding a suitable engine. Both the Atlas V and Delta IV relied on the Russian RD-180, which Congress ordered to be gradually removed from American deployed rockets as tensions with Moscow continued to escalate. The replacement was found in the BE-4 liquid rocket engine, built by Blue Origin, Jeff Bezos' space company. The BE-4 was plagued by years of development delays, repeatedly pushing back its delivery. But even if the engines had been ready on time, the new rocket itself was facing hurdles of its own. ULA tried to combine the most efficient technology from Atlas and Delta with cost reductions and performance upgrades, but early tests revealed failures that forced engineers back to the drawing board to rethink key design elements. The hope had been that the rocket would be ready to start flying by 2019. Yet by early 2025, 
there were still doubts about when it would finally take off. Frustration grew inside the Space Force, which had been waiting years for ULA's new rocket system to carry some of its most advanced satellites into orbit. Cordel de la Pena, head of the Space System Center's satellite communications portfolio, warned, quote, The longer it takes to actually launch those experiments, get the data, and be able to assess it, the window starts to close on the availability of production vehicles. For a time, it seemed ULA might falter against SpaceX once again. But before the company could be written off, certification came through at the last minute. After validating dozens of criteria, completing over a hundred audits, and conducting two test flights, the Space Force finally approved Vulcan for National Security Space Launch missions, officially positioning it as the newest challenger to SpaceX's Falcon 9. Vulcan's launch took place at 8.56 p.m. The final version of the nearly 200-foot-tall rocket roared to life with two BE-4 engines and four solid boosters, which were discarded shortly after liftoff, along with Vulcan's first stage. From there, a pair of Aerojet Rocketdyne RL-10C engines on the second stage took over, carrying the mission the rest of the way, much like the process previously used on Atlas V. As Vulcan arced eastward over the Atlantic, it unleashed an estimated three million pounds of thrust, its bright exhaust lighting up the night sky. While the full details of the payload remain classified, and live coverage ended shortly after liftoff, Vulcan is known to be capable of carrying up to 60,000 pounds of cargo into orbit, and for this inaugural mission, it's believed to have been traveling with at least one classified system, and the highly anticipated Navigation Technology Satellite 3, or NTS-3, an experimental spacecraft designed to push the boundaries of America's navigation technology. Colonel Jim Horn, Mission Director for the U.S. Space Force, confirmed, quote, After years of development, technical collaboration, and dedication by all involved, including our government mission partners and the entire ULA team, I'm proud to say the first Vulcan NSSL mission delivered its payloads safely into space. According to the Air Force Research Laboratory, the deployment of the NTS-3 aboard Vulcan will help the U.S. Space Force strengthen its extraterrestrial defense infrastructure at a time when nations across the globe are racing to assert their dominance in space. The NTS-3 is described as, quote, a geosynchronous orbiting testbed that will enable experimentation of new positioning, navigation, and timing technologies and concepts. It's the first satellite of its kind, deployed by the Department of Defense since the launch of the previous NTS-1 and 2 back in the 70s. Designed to operate for at least a year, NTS-3 will give American and Allied forces the ability to gain regional coverage in real time during future operations and crises. Unlike other GPS systems, it was engineered to receive on-orbit software updates from ground crews, and as threats evolve, operators will be able to arm the system with new waveforms, stronger signals, and updated countermeasures, ensuring the U.S. maintains its technological edge in the years to come. To guarantee secure and reliable service, NTS-3 incorporates Chimera, an authentication system that eradicates spoofing attempts by blocking fake signals meant to disrupt navigation. It also carries an ensemble of atomic clocks that work together to detect and correct timing errors, keeping the satellite service ultra-precise and dependable. If successful, NTS-3 could pave the way for a new generation of smaller, cheaper, and more resilient satellite constellations. These systems could give U.S. forces on land, sea, and air jam-resistant navigation capabilities, even when conducting operations across contested battlefields. However, who will be tasked with launching this next generation of satellites remains to be seen. Although ULA aims to scale Vulcan flights to two launches per month by the end of the year, SpaceX continues to accelerate its own deployments, and soon this won't be its only rival. Earlier this year, Blue Origin successfully launched its new Glenn rocket for the first time, a reusable system built to carry heavier payloads while reducing both waste and cost. The rocket is already booked to conduct NASA research missions and holds agreements with private satellite firms aiming to build the world's first space-based cellular broadband network. While no firm date has been set for its second flight, reports suggest it could happen as soon as later this year or in early 2026, potentially carrying a mission that some speculate may involve sending spacecraft to Mars. If that launch succeeds, Blue Origin will be one step closer to earning full certification to join the Space Force's National Security Space Launch Program, formally becoming the newest competitor against SpaceX and ULA. But the company's not stopping there. Shortly after its debut flight, 
Blue Origin declared, quote, New Glenn is foundational to advancing our customers' critical missions, as well as our own. The vehicle underpins our efforts to establish sustained human presence on the moon, harness in-space resources, provide multi-mission, multi-orbit mobility, and establish destinations in low Earth orbit. Aside from Blue Origin, Rocket Lab, Relativity Space, Northrop Grumman, and Firefly Aerospace have also reported to be actively working on rockets of their own, signaling the start of a new era, one where space is closer and more contested than ever before. Thanks for watching. Before you go, remember, moving fast matters. With Lovable, you can describe your idea, see it turn into a working project, and improve it step by step. Visit lovable.dev, use my code darktechyt20, valid until October 29th, 2025, and get 20% off when you start building today.